and we will start with the first paper, uh, CHARM, Composing Heterogeneous Accelerators for Matrix Multiply on Versal ACAP Architecture. Uh, so our speaker is uh, Jinming Zhuang. So Jinming is currently a PhD student in ECE at the University of Pittsburgh, advised by Professor Pei Pei Zhu. Uh, his research focuses on heterogeneous architecture, software, hardware code design, and program abstraction. Um, so, I can do this. Good morning, everyone. This is Jimmy Zhuang from University of Pittsburgh. Welcome to our project CHARM, Composing Heterogeneous Accelerator for Matrix Multiply on Versal SAP Architecture. This work is a collaboration between University of Pittsburgh, UCLA, UIUC, and MD Zalinks. Back to last year, we were very excited to work on Versal SAP for its heterogeneity and high throughput. However, when we are designing the matrix multiply based accelerator, we find it's non trivial for us to sustain the high throughput, especially for the applications with both small and large matrices. Our first design achieves uh, 49.5k flop, uh, flops throughput. And after we apply the charm, we have 32.5x uh, gain. You may wonder how we managed to do that. Before answering this question, we will first introduce the Versal SAP architecture. So Versal SAP is a seven nanometer fully software programmable heterogeneous compute platform featuring the processing system, the programmable logic, and the dedicated artificial intelligence engine arrays. Here, each AI engine is a very long instruction word supported vector processor with 32K bytes memory. For our target device, VCK190, there are 400 AI engines and the communication between the AIE with the other component is through the 39 IO tiles marked as the white box uh, in the figure with up to 1.2 terabytes per second uh, bandwidth. And the air engine array, the processing system, and the programmable logic can access the off chip memory through the network on chip with uh, 25.6 gigabytes per second bandwidth. Compared with the previous APGA, in terms of the computation scaling, the throughput of VCK190 with AI engine running at one gigahertz under FP32 data type is 4.3 and 14.8 X compared with U250 and VC709 FPGA with PL running at 300 megahertz. However, in terms of the DDR off chip bandwidth scaling, the bandwidth of VCK190 is one third of U250 uh, FPGA and about 85% uh, compared with VC709 FPGA. So the given bandwidth of VCK190 brings a challenge for us to sustain the high throughput of the whole system. So to solve this problem, we hugely explore the on-chip data reuse. That is more specifically, we, uh, the, PL, the DMA in the PL side will first load a bulk of data from the DDR space to the on-chip buffer. And from there, the air engine array will reuse the small piece of data for several times. And during this time, we will use the double buffer to cover the um, off-chip memory axis of another bulk of data in the DDR space. However, this solution doesn't work when the metric size is small. So assume we have the application that have small layers marked as valid data in the DDR space. If with the same hardware configuration, meaning that we still allocate a large number of VRAM and AIE. Then if we go in the same processes, it will lead to both the invalid communication and the invalid computation. So here to uh, show the real onboard implementation result, we map the matrix multiply on 384 AI engines with over 80% utilization of the on-chip buffers, including VRAM and URAM. And uh, the uh, onboard implementation shows that when the metric size is large, for example, and point A, by exploring the on-chip data reuse, we can achieve 2,800 gig flops throughput. 
However, and point B, because of the shape mismatch between the huge computation resource and the metric size, uh, we only achieve 0.4 gig flops here. Then in this work, we propose a, a methodology to compose multiple accelerators together so that by properly partition the hardware resource, we can avoid the both invalid communication and the invalid computation. For a quick summary, we provide a white box open source tool so that it can aid the programming effort of the users. And it can also be a good reference for the designers to design other applications. Next, in terms of the design challenge aspects, we hugely explore the entry buffer reuse to sustain the throughput. And we propose a two-step accelerator composing algorithm for the applications that contains both small and large layers. Next, we will introduce our compilation flow. The charm takes the matrix multiply based AI model, for example, the BERT, VIT, MLP, et cetera, and the one time effort profiling of object bandwidth, the hardware resource constraints as input. And by leveraging the backend compilers, it will automatically generate the bit stream and the host executable file that can be directly deployed on board. And for our main part of the charm framework, there are four modules, including the single accelerator DSE, the diverse accelerator composer, the runtime configuration, and automatic code generator. So when uh, composing multiple accelerators together, our charm diverse composer will sequentially launch the single accelerator design space exploration, and the runtime configuration is responsible for keep the right execution order of the different layers, and the automatic Code generator will leverage the information coming from the diverse accelerator composer as well as the runtime configuration to generate the code, uh, C or C++ instruction code for AIE and the AIE graph uh, for the AIE design. And for PL design, it will generate the high level synthesis C or C++ code. For the host, it will generate the MD Linux runtime library based C or C++ code. And next, we will highlight our charm uh, diverse accelerator composer and the single accelerator DSE. So for single accelerator design, we follow a bottom up strategy. That is from single AIE, AIE array, PO to the whole system. Let's first look at our single AIE design. So here, uh, after we dig into the hardware detail of the virtual SAP architecture, we create a templates that make full use of the very long instruction word capability uh, so that we can, uh, instead of using 115 lines of a code, the user can just input three lines of code to indicate the metric size. And here we list the single AIE efficiency with different metric size. And finally, we choose 32 by 32 by 32 as our single AIE design because of its high computation efficiency. And compared with the HGCN work, our single AIE uh, at the size of 32 by 32 by 32 achieves 2x gain. Then when scaling out to AI engine array, the connection between PO and AIE, namely the PO IO, uh, could possibly be the bottleneck, uh, especially when nearly 400 AI engines are utilized. So here we try to hugely explore the IO reuse. There are two mechanisms uh, in the PO IO that we can send the data from single IO to multiple destination, including the broadcast and packet switch. So the main difference between these two is when using broadcast, the same data can be sent to multiple destination at the same time. And when using packet switch, the different data will be time multiplexed sent to different destination and different time. And here we combine these two mechanisms together. And here's an example that we send the first row of left-hand side matrix to compute with the right-hand side matrix. And we assume for illustration purpose, we just assume the right-hand side matrix is preloaded into the engine array. And back to the left-hand side matrix, the data zero will be broadcast to the zeroth row of AI engine and time zero. And data one will be broadcast to the first row of AI engine in time one. And the same thing will happen to data two and data three. So far, we illustrate how we can use the single POIO to send data to 16 AI engines. That's, and that's our methodology 
that how we sustain the 400 air engines with the given number of PLIO. Next, uh, based on the aforementioned design methodology for single AIE and uh, AIE array, we built an analytic model for the single accelerator design. Our single accelerator takes the layers that are assigned to this accelerator and the hardware that allocated to this accelerator as input. And it will generate the estimated throughput as well as the hardware configurations, for example, the AIE design and the POI reuse strategy. Then when we, are, when we try to compose multiple accelerators together, there are two steps. The first is workload assignment and the hardware resource partitioning. So this diverse accelerator composer aims to solve the problem of how can we assign multiple layers in one model to multiple number of accelerators. During this process, we will first settle the number of accelerators as a hyperparameter. Here's an example. Assume we have five layers that need to be mapped to two accelerators. First, in order to reduce the search time into uh, polynomial complexity, we'll first sort the order of the layers by the operation, the number of operation in each layer, and we add one block in these five layers to assign uh, these five layers to two accelerator. So here L3 will be mapped to accelerator one and the rest of the four layers will be mapped to accelerator zero. And we, we, next we will partition the hardware resource proportionally to the total number of operations that mapped to this accelerator. And then our uh, diverse composer will sequentially launch the single accelerator DSE and it will generate the hardware configuration for each accelerator and report the overall throughput. Next time, we will change another workload assignment strategy and uh, also update the hardware partitioning. Then we will go, the, go through the same processes and check if the overall throughput is better. If so, we will record that. And so far, we discussed how we can uh, deal with two accelerator. Remember that we said the number of accelerator and the hyperparameter. So our charm will cover the design space, which means it will change the number of accelerators and do the explore again and update the optimized design if it exists. So far, we address how we uh, doing the single accelerator design as well as how we compose multiple accelerators together. Next, let's look at our experiment results. First, we will evaluate our single accelerator design. We compare our single accelerator implemented on AIE with the one implemented uh, purely on PL. So uh, the uh, P pure PL design uh, utilizes over 80% eight, uh, eight, of the DSP58 and uh, over 90% of the BRAM. And our design on AIE achieves 5.5x and 1.9x gain uh, compared uh, in the throughput and the energy efficiency uh, respectively. And for our single accelerator design space exploration, we verify its accuracy when changing the square metric size. So it indicates that compared with the onboard implementation results, our single, uh, single accelerator DSE has less than 5% error rates indicating it's a very accurate uh, analytical model. And we also apply our charm framework to many applications, including the BERT for uh, natural language processing, the vision transformer for classification, the NCF for recommendation system, and multi-layer perception for regression classification, et cetera. And here, we also visualize the characteristics of the application to help us explain our experiment results. So here, for BERT, we have six relatively larger layers and two types of smaller layers with 96 layer in each type. So we can, observe, we can observe obvious shape variance in this application. And for the VIT, the uh, shape variance is even larger in terms of the variance in both the size and the number of uh, layers of small layer and uh, large layers. Uh, for NCF and MLP, the larger layer dominates uh, the application. So next, we will see our implement, implementation results uh, among different charm strategies, including one monolithic, one specialized, two diverse, and eight duplicates. 
the one monolithic is a general solution that can deal with the metric metrics uh, with arbitrary size. So it can be applied to th these four applications. And further, we use the design space exploration for single accelerator to find a specialized design for these four application named one specialized. And this two diverse one is a represent representative solution find by our charm uh, diverse composer. And the eight duplicate design is we uh, apply the same concept as the MD Zilinx DP, uh, DPU, uh, which means we put several accelerator together with the same size directly. And our charm will cover the design space and find the best strategy among all these settings here marked as the blue bar. So for the BERT and VIT application, the two diverse accelerator is the best configuration since uh, they have the uh, shape variance in these two application. And uh, as expected, the gain of a vision transformer is larger because it has larger shape variance. And for the NCF and the MLP application, the one accelerator stands out because uh, the larger uh, layer dominates the application. Uh, the application. And uh, that's about our experiment results. So that's uh, all for today's presentation and uh, welcome to any questions. Thank you very much. So we have some time for questions. Hi. So uh, this framework is is already open source, right? Completely open source. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So support. I wonder when you design this, uh, do you are you faced with any challenges in the physical design, like how you map these uh, map these computation units onto the AI engine grid? Uh, oh. Do you see there's any challenges and opportunities? Yeah. So the AI engine array has four hundred AI engines. So there are some problems when we doing the placement and route. Uh, so for this application, because this is matrix multiply, it's relatively regular. So we can uh, very evenly partition the workload into several accelerators. So our placement now is, uh, uh, I should say more specific placement for matrix multiply. But uh, in the future, of course, we will cover more applications and we want to generate a more general placement routing algorithm as well. But now we have a, a basic placement for the matrix multiply. Okay, got it, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you for the talk. Um, I was wondering if you could elaborate on the cost of the preloading method you mentioned for the right-hand side matrix and whether um, that cost changes depending on the, side of the, on the size of the matrix, like for smaller matrices, do you have to pay a, long, uh, like a, a bigger overhead because preloading takes time? Uh, so your question is, uh, if the metric size matters, our uh, LE level uh, data movement, you mean the broadcast and packet switch, right? Yes. Uh, so yes, uh, that's a good point for the bro uh, for the packet switch because we time multiplex to use the uh, single port to send data to different uh, AIEs. So uh, if we want to avoid of any uh, performance de degradation, then we need to guarantee the computation to communication ratio in single AIE is larger than the number of destinations. Yeah. So we have some size consideration, uh, mainly because of the computation to communication ratio in single AIE. Okay, I yeah. see, yeah, thank, thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much for the interesting talk. I think you showed advantage of those AIE in this application. Uh, can you elaborate 
how much special benefit you think this AIE is bringing into this design? Say the AIE comparing to the traditional PL or a systolic array. What's uh, something so special about the AIE here in this application? Yeah, so uh, for my understanding, AIE has higher frequency uh, and it's a uh, more coarse grained architecture than the traditional PL. And in single AIE, it has the 2D dimension CMD instruction for different data type. So the main uh, difference is it has high frequency, it has higher parallelism, so it provides higher throughput. Yeah, that's my understanding, yeah. Yeah, so thank you for, for the talk. Uh, I had a, two questions. So the first one, maybe I missed this, but does the framework also explore dynamic changes of the compositions of the AI engines into matrix multiplication engines while the workload is running. So let's say, for example, now I'm executing some layers that have a better configuration so I can change the configuration over time, or does it just split the AI engine and it's fixed for the whole duration of the workload? Uh, do you mean the dynamic, uh, uh, dynamic reconfiguration, uh, reconfigurability of this yeah. design? So okay. think of like dynamic load balancing type of split between the AI engine. Uh, currently, our design don't have the dynamic reconfigure, uh, reconfigurability, but uh, we, yeah, we want to explore these aspects because we have MAIR flow, which can generate the you know, file for uh, AI engine in very short time and uh, for some scenario, maybe it's affordable for us to change another uh, uh, EO file to the AI engine array. And uh, maybe it can, because of the specialized design, it can uh, achieve higher throughput. And uh, also because this AI engine is a processor. So we may have opportunity to uh, use this uh, capability to dynamically change the behavior of single AIE. So that's also one possible dynamic uh, configuration capability. Yeah. I see. And, and the second one is more generic question. So based on your experience designing for AIEs, mm -hmm. was it useful to have kind of the programmable interconnect between AIEs in designing for it? Or if you have any comments on uh, if only this AIE had something different in the way it's working, it would have been better. Uh, do you mean, uh, maybe we want some more flexible connection between PL and AIE? Uh, between PL and AIE, between AIEs, uh, something related to the architecture of the AIE itself that you thought could have been better based on your experience designing this? Uh, yeah, if, uh, so for the PL to AIE, if we have a more flexible connection, then it uh, definitely will benefit. Um, but I think maybe we can try to build an overlay that supports some of the flexibility because we have fine-grained PL in our board. So I think it will if we have more flexible connection between these components. Yeah, yeah, thank you. All right, please help me um, thank Jimming for a yeah, great yeah. talk.